Hey everybody, it's Harry from Super Daddy Barbecue, the YouTube channel that teaches you how to master barbecue so you can spread barbecue love. You know, continuing series to test out the Hasty Bake Legacy. We're going to do a sear test today using some beautiful spiny lobster, freshly caught off the coast of California by one of my Patreons, Chris Gavin. And he has uh, given me a lobster that was live. I'm going to show you how we prepare the lobster. And we're going to set up the Hasty Bake for a sear type of a fire management and show you guys how to sear lobsters, have a little butter sauce and create a dynamite style mayo dressing to go on top. All right, a lot of you have asked me how do you dispatch a lobster? So if you saw me on Food Network, Chop Grill Master, we cook live lobster on the set. So the very first thing you want to do is you want to kill the lobster humanely. You take a sharp knife, you just stick it in the back of the neck here. So you sever the brain stem and it kills the animal instantly. So this is the humane way to kill the animal. You want to take out the uh, meat from the tail on the spiny lobster. This is different than say a Boston New England lobster, pull out the tail, so you get a beautiful lobster tail like that. I like to cut off the, uh, use a beater knife like a Chinese chopper, get the uh, spines off and I like to crack the shell right down the middle so there's a lot of meat in the middle. Okay, like so. All this gunk goes away. You can trim the legs off, but I like to leave the legs off presentation, so let's give this a wash. There's several ways you can prep lobster tails. You can obviously cut it right in half and then uh, make a like a lobster thermidor. Or for presentation purposes, I'm going to show you guys how you can cut the backbone and then kind of push the meat out and then we can grill it whole so that it looks really like a million bucks when you serve it to your guests. Uh, there's some fins here, the swimming fins here. And trim out some of these fins and just be careful this is a spiny lobster so you see the little hooks here these are really sharp so when you fix your lobster try not to get poked yourself with the spines here so this lobster is super fresh since it was swimming or moving not too long ago all right take a sh sharp scissors break it down the middle here just use your finger and uh, move the meat away from the shell as best as you can Take your time, try not to damage the meat. All right, run, your, run your hand underneath like so. Just scoop it underneath, free the meat at the bottom. So you can pull it out and place it on the top of the shell. And be very gentle when you do this. Kind of work your way around without damaging the meat. And try not to hurt yourself. This is the sharp edges here. Do the other side now. Free the meat. All right, once the meat is free. All right, so we are free the meat, like so. See that? So just be take your time. If it's your first time, don't rush. Uh, just a tip here, here's the uh, intestines. You, you probably wanna take this one out here. It's probably not very good eating. Toss this. Ready to go. The hasty bake is starting up and we'll let the fire start up, take about maybe 15 minutes. Uh, you always want to leave the door open when you start your fire. I have it now on the low setting and I'm going to crank it up to the high setting. So you just turn the crank and it goes about 14 inches from the way to the bottom to the top so that we can sear the lobsters all the way to the top. Just wait for it to light up. The coals have burned down a little bit, so it's really hot now. We want to get it around 450 degrees. There's a lobster right here. Brush a little bit of butter on it so we can get the rub on. 
If you're using my uh, slap uh, chicken rub, it works really, really well on seafood. Nice coating of it. Since we apply the butter, the rub's gonna stick nicely. You wanna make sure that your vents are wide open on the exhaust, which is on the left side. And you also wanna make sure that your right side intake dampers are wide open. While our lobster is cooking, I wanted to give you kind of a walk around tour of the Hasty Bake Legacy 132. This is America's oldest grill, invented in 1948 by a gentleman by the name of Grant Hastings. He had just come back from World War II and was looking to enjoy cooking in his backyard. At that point in time, no one had invented a grill that uh, would uh, be used in the backyard, so he built the Hasty Bake design. It's got a lot of many innovative features that are 70 years old, but very, very useful even today. First thing you want to notice is that it's a ventless hood design, like so. And uh, everything is completely covered in smoke. And uh, it has an ingenious draft system, whereby the air comes in through these holes here, series of holes, and it flows right through the chamber, like so, with an adjustable height firebox Right now, it's all the way to the top, 14 inch below if it drops to the bottom through the crank screw. Got a nice little pan here to catch all of the ash, so it's super easy to clean. If you saw my unboxing episode, you saw how I cleaned it. The uh, air goes in through these damper holes, flows right through, circulates in the ventless hood, and come out on this side here. Like so, so some vents here. Show you guys how it looks like here. And there's a little vents are right here see that and there's a little uh, grease cup for your grease here and uh, it's got a little V channel show you the V channel here a little V channel that runs the length of the hasty bake so that the oil will drain down and drain into the grease cup very very ingenious design and I showed you earlier it's got a crank so you can lower and raise the height of the charcoal basket and go from sear all the way down to smoke. You can go from sear to bake to smoke and back. So I have it cranked all the way to the top because I want to sear my lobster under high heat, probably around 400, 450 degrees. Super solid design, stainless steel. This will last you a couple of different lifetimes. We're gonna serve the lobster with some dynamite sauce, which is uh, a sauce that's found very commonly in uh, Japanese restaurants. You don't kind of have how you in and out burger or burger places have Thousand Island where you mix ketchup and the mayo. Uh, well, this thing is the kind of same thing, except you mix a, an iconic California ingredient called Sriracha. This one is made in Irvingdale, California near Los Angeles. By Hoi Fong Foods. In order to make uh, this dynamite sauce, you really should get this brand of Japanese QP mayo. And uh, if you cannot find this, Best Foods mayo or any regular mayo will work. We're gonna basically put three ingredients together. The mayo, sriracha to kind of spice it up, a little bit of rub for salt, and then this thing called uh, masago, which is a sort of a smelt fish roll. A little bit of mayo, as much or as little sriracha as you like. I like spicy, so I'm gonna put more. A little bit of a barbecue rub. And a little bit of masago, which is a Japanese style fish roll. And we're gonna use some for the garnish in a little bit also. Give it a taste test. Pretty good. Just add a tad more rub. All right, the bottom of the lobster is cooked, so I'm going to flip it around and cook the top. So don't worry about flipping the lobster over because it's still attached to the shell, so it's not going to fall off. And you can get a nice char also on the top part. So it's a nice char all over. We're going to put the dynamite sauce on and do a little flambe in a little bit. All right, we're at 140 degrees. Looks like it's done. Let's go ahead and put on some of our dynamite sauce now. You can use as much or as little as you like. If you don't even want it, that's fine. Just brush it with butter, maybe some garlic, some chives, and you're all set. But I think the uh, 
Japanese style of the dynamite is really works really well with any kind of seafood or fish. All right, let it warm up a little bit. All right, our lobster is done with the dynamite sauce. I like a little bit more char, a little bit of sauce. Char is really good. You don't have this is optional, but makes for a great um, final result. And if you are pyro me any egg like me, I think like a little bit of a fat bay at the end. A completed dish our lobster dynamite cooked on a hasty bake i top it up with some uh, extra masago at the end because i kind of like the briny taste of those little bubbles of caviar briny and bursting with the flavor of the ocean in your mouth as you eat the lobster this is a great recipe not just for lobster but you can use it for shrimp you can use it for fish pretty much any kind of seafood including scallops and um, new zealand mussels so very very versatile recipe only has uh, mayo sriracha and that's it if you can skip the fish eggs if you don't like fish eggs just the mayo and sriracha also works and then a touch of uh, any kind of barbecue rub that you like so can't wait to dig into this dish here all right at long last let's give it a shot here for those of you wondering what this is this is a famous uh, masamoto ks one of the nicest knives around from japan handmade knife and uh, i love just love using it i've been using it for a few weeks now absolutely fantastic knife all right here you go this is how it looks like Absolutely gorgeous bite here with the masago and the lobster and the dynamite sauce. Just fantastic flavor of that fresh, caught, spiny California lobster. There's something magical about just fresh seafood from the ocean. Cooked simply with just a grill, a little bit of rub. And then that final touch with the dynamite sauce really kind of brings out that full wonderful flavor of the ocean and then the uh, masago with the little fish eggs kind of burst like little bits of the ocean as they explode in your mouth kind of like the way you pop those uh packet packet packing bubbles but this one happened in your mouth you get the briny taste of the ocean we also got a little bit of smoke from a charcoal grill so the easy bake is a fantastic charcoal cooker it has got a lot of space on it to cook a whole bunch of Hamburgers for parties, extremely versatile, able to bake, able to sear, able to smoke. In my next episode, I'm going to be doing more cooking on it. We'll do some low and slow. Maybe we'll do a brisket exercise style, show you guys how to do a snake method on a hasty bake. So before I go too far, let's see if Mr. Beans wants to try some of this dynamite lobster. It's got a little kick because I put too much sriracha, but I like spicy. So I hope Beans likes, also likes spicy. I'll cut him a small piece. Make sure he doesn't get overwhelmed by the spiciness of the lobster here. Let's go find Mr. Beans. This is a dynamite lobster, okay? Freshly caught California spiny lobster. Give it a bite. Okay, I think you like it. Thanks for stopping by to watch my Hasty Bake episode, searing the lobster dynamite. Thanks again to Richard Alexander for sending me the uh, unit to test on. Until the next video, we will see ya. Please keep spreading barbecue love.